in this video I'm going to show you guys my top 10 coolest things about astrophotography that I got this year. Most of my photographs contain something. They have something that is really really cool. So I'm just gonna share these 10 photographs with you starting with number one. You can see three galaxies there but if you look closely on the like middle top towards the right area you can see four small dots. A red, a green, a blue and a grey dot moving in a line. So when I take color images I use four filters. I use the red, the green, the blue and then the luminance which is the grey one. And when something is moving in my photographs you get that pattern. So that pattern is actually something moving turned out to be an asteroid. And I did a video about that earlier. You can just check my videos and you'll see it. Moving along to number two is this photograph. This is my favorite photograph. This is the Dark Shark Nebula on the lower right and the Rotten Fish Nebula on the upper left. And this image is incredibly hard to photograph. This is an EFN. It's dust and clouds. It's called, in, it stands for Integrated Flux Nebula and it's incredibly faint. You need extreme dark locations to photograph something like this. I travel to a star party, a border one slash two area, which is super dark. It's by the ocean. It's on the southern tip of an island in Sweden called Öland. And it's like, it's out in the ocean basically. So it's really, really dark. And this photograph is so nice. I mean, it's taken with the red cat. It's a bit of a wide field area. So the moon is roughly maybe a fifth of this image, the full moon diameter. You would probably fit five full moons within this frame. Um, so you can just get a hunch on the size of the entire thing. And you can see galaxies, you can see stars, and you can see this dust that is all around this place. And it's just such a beautiful image to me. Really, really special. Moving along to image number three. This one is really cool. This is the sunflower galaxy and it's a horrible image i mean if you know galaxies if you can photograph galaxies you will know that this is not a good photograph and it's not good because it's taken from my balcony in my bottle nine area but it's very special because it's the first image ever taken with my edge hd8 telescope so that is my new telescope and i and I know that uh, it had some problems before I bought it uh, used and I think I fixed it. I still struggle a little bit with the autofocus routine, but this image is the first that I managed to take. And I mean, you can clearly see that this, that this uh, telescope will deliver. It's a very special telescope for me. It's uh, my childhood dream telescope. The Celestron 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain was like the holy grail of telescopes. So I am really happy to own one. I own the Edge version, of course, which is for astrophotography. But yeah, I mean, this, this just simply warms my heart when I look at it. Moving on to image number four. This photograph is the Iris Nebula in the middle, that blue, blue area. And then towards the right, you see some red and that is the Ghost Nebula. And I know that this region is filled with dust and gas. Again, IFN, Integrated Flux Nebula. And I wanted to see what does this area look like in a wide field photograph. Again, the Red Cat 51, you can fit maybe five full moons in the entire frame of this image, in the width of this image. And you can clearly see the dust and gas interacting with each other. And you see the Iris Nebula there in the middle, that cool, cool area. And then you have a little bit of hotter, hot spots, like redder areas towards the left and the right. And it's simply a very nice image. And you can see the dust and the gas, how they interact and move. And I also removed the stars in this one using AI. So you can see the dust and the gas even more clearly you can also see a galaxy on the top left corner there popping up suddenly. There are a few areas that are really interesting and nice to watch. And I'm, I'm just, I just love this photograph. Again, I love all my photographs. <laughs> Image number five is taken from my balcony. This is a Boral 9 photography, one of the most light polluted 
areas in the world like the northern Sweden or the northern Europe most light polluted area central Stockholm where I live you have the Perseus double cluster and stars aren't really that difficult to photograph from my area the stars are bright and you can photograph them the colors will be a little bit washed out but you can just enhance them in post-production uh, but the thing is that there is, this area is full with hydrogen alpha it's the red gas so I know others have discovered this really faint red gas the hydrogen alpha signal so I wanted to see can I photograph this from my area as well so again I took the red cat 51 which is the fastest scope that I have I put up my three nanometer H alpha filter and I photographed this area for six hours which isn't enough I should have like maybe 15 hours but the area has moved away from my balcony so I can't really photograph it anymore I will however collect more data from this specific area next year where the Perseus double cluster again is uh, available from my balcony because I need more data to see more details of these dust and gas clouds but uh, the thing is that initial results show that it's actually possible to photograph this even from my really really bad location going from a bottle 9 area to a bottle 5 area which is a little bit better still not perfect this area is the helping hand nebula i wanted to see this area like the dust that surround it i love dust you can clearly see that in these photographs but you see that you you can see that helping hand those dark fingers holding something up and I mean this is a wide for field photograph so you it's not really zoomed in but I wanted to see like the entire the entire area around it these really really super faint dust uh, clouds that are in that area this is a very hard image this is one of the hardest that I photographed it took me like maybe 17 hours of data collection and unfortunately I had to throw away in probably half of that data because I had the ice crystals in the air I had high moving clouds so I couldn't see them in the in in the individual subs but when I added those images together I could clearly see the streaks of clouds so I had to just throw those subs away which when I ended up with roughly eight hours of worth of data so I can't uh, pull out more data without starting to destroy the quality of this image so this is unfortunately all that I had but it's a bit special to me because it was really hard to take I used it in a bottle 5 area I traveled to take this photograph and I simply just love those dark dusty fingers that are in the middle of this area moving to image number seven this is taken from my balcony again bottle 9 highly light polluted and this is special because it's a bit of a different composition now to the right you'll see the North American nebula and to the left you see the clamshell nebula and a lot of astrophotographers choose to photograph these separately if you photograph the North American nebula you tend to photograph it together with the pelican nebula which is to the far right of this image not visible it's outside of the frame but the point is astrophotographers tend to frame the North American nebula together with the pelican nebula it's a beautiful composition I have taken that image too but I noticed that the clamshell nebula is to the left of this area so I wanted to see what this area looked like together what what kind of interactions are happening with these two nebulas together and yeah I think that they're fairly close to each other so I think that they are interacting but uh, maybe in another video maybe prove myself wrong we'll see for now this is a special image to me because it's a special composition the clamshell nebula and the North American nebula together not something you see every day moving along to image number eight this is a single three minute sub of a galaxy don't really remember what the name of this galaxy was but the point is it's not the galaxy you should be looking at it is that bright little spot in the middle of the galaxy uh, or a little bit to the right of the galaxy and that is a supernova it's an exploding star inside of that galaxy they become so bright that you can see them like that I photographed this galaxy which is probably a few million light years away 
imagine living just a few thousand light years away from that one. It's going to fill up your sky. It's going to be visible in daytime. So I wanted to photograph a supernova and that is what that image is. Speaking of supernovas, this is image number nine. This is a supernova remnant. This is what is left behind after a supernova. So this is something that occurred in our own galaxy about 30 to 50,000 years ago. And it has been recorded by human history. Uh, they think that the Chinese uh, uh, recorded a bright star occurring during the daytime. And it's roughly in the area of where this nebula exists. So they think it's the same. Not really sure, but that's what they think. And this is uh, called the Jellyfish Nebula. And I'm a bit surprised with this one because I thought that uh, the supernova remnant, like the small star that is left, was inside in the middle of this entire bubble or the jellyfish. But it, it turns out that the remnant is more in this area. Um, and I did again did a video about where I tried to photograph the remnant itself. I mean, NASA had to send out a space telescope to see the remnant or to discover the remnant. I may have managed to photograph it. You can see it in my videos down below. Just uh, go ahead and search it to find it. But uh, what was interesting about this is that the remnant or the brown dwarf that uh, is the remnant uh, wasn't in the middle, but more in that area. And it does make sense. You can tend to see like the S-shaped explosion pattern that occurred after that. Uh, I learned something new there. So yeah, the last image is this one. Again, this is not a good image. This is taken with the edge, with a reducer, with my deep sky imaging camera, not with a planetary camera, but it was a test. And what I wanted to test was to see if the edge was sharp enough to take photographs of Jupiter. And I knew that uh, one of the moons, Io in this case, were passing through Jupiter and it was going to cast a shadow on it. And I, and I figured like, why not take a 30 second video and see what happens when I stack it? Will I see something? And boy, did I see something. You can actually see Io on the top right uh, area of uh, Jupiter. It's a small little dot and you can also see the shadow that it casts on the planet. So for me, that is super cool. I can photograph the shadow of a moon being cast on another planet in our solar system. And I'm not even using my telescope at its peak. I mean, for, uh, for planetary photography, you need reach, you need like 4,000 millimeters of focal length at the very least. This is taking at 1,400 millimeters. When I do this properly, when I learn enough to be able to take photographs of planets using my edge, this the image is just going to be so much better even using one of my, the two planetary cameras that I also had that I haven't used yet. So that was it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed these uh, 10 images and you may find them almost as special as I do. I am really happy with these images and I am really happy to be able to continue doing this, take out my telescopes, my own observatories and just explore space at my own pace, with my own cameras, with my own I don't know, in my own way, and just simply sharing this with you guys. It's, it's great. So if you have enjoyed this video, do give it a like. It helps me out a lot to reach other people. And hopefully the YouTube algorithm will think that this is a good and important video for others to see. I don't know. But uh, do not forget to write a comment or uh, your thoughts in the comment section. I enjoy those a lot and I reply to every one of them. Um, and of course, if you want to see more of my content, more astrophotography and more exploration of space and astronomy, don't forget to subscribe and, uh, yeah, well, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year for those that it applies and I'll see you next year. Uh, bye bye for now.